Today we are going to talk about part two of how to address people in formal and informal settings. Now, in part one, we talked about the concept of surnames. So sur a surname is basically a name that is passed down from generation to generation. And in the Western world, that would be similar to a family name. So for example, I'll give you an example of Elizabeth Wakefield. So Wakefield is the surname that is passed down from generation to generation, unless, of course, she gets married and take on her husband's surname. And we talked about how to address women, for example. We can address her as Miss if she's a young woman or a young girl, or Ms. if we don't know if she's married or not. Ms. that's pronounced M-I-Z, Ms. And then Mrs. with her surname. So Mrs. would be for women who are married and they take up their husband's surname, Mrs. something. Now for men, on the other hand, we have Mr. Mr. and his surname. And when we don't know his name, we can call him Sir as well, Sir. And for women, if we don't know her name, we can call her Ma'am or even Miss. Okay, Ma'am or Miss. So this is usually used, like for example, you might hear that in a restaurant, in a hotel, when they, they can say, how can I help you, ma'am? Or how can I help you, sir? Right, now it's different for us in Malaysia because we don't have a surname, so it's different. And I'm gonna talk more about that in today's episode. Now more on Miss and Mr and Mrs as well. Okay, so let's look at how this is used at schools and universities. First, we'll go to the UK. So I went to school there in the UK. So I'm going to give you some examples of how our teachers were addressed over there. Okay. Now in schools and universities in the UK, we have, for example, Miss Webster, Ms. Webster. So remember, although it's spelled M-S, it's pronounced Ms. Ms. Webster. We have another example, Miss Shad, M-I-S-S, Miss Shad, Mrs. Thompson, Mrs. Thompson. So Mrs. Thompson is a woman who's married and she's probably taken on her husband's surname. So her husband's surname is Thompson. Mr. Barnes. Mr. Barnes is an example of a male teacher. And in this particular case, Mr. Barnes was our um, school teacher back in the UK. He's our headmaster, in fact, a very kind man. At universities, it's a bit more um, relaxed, but I'll, I'll give you an example of how to address them in a formal setting. So we can call them by their title if they have a doctor in front of their name. So it'd be title and a surname, for example, Dr. Jones. And then if we want to be slightly informal with them, and this is accepted, culturally accepted in the UK to be informal with them, because you're older now as a student and somehow it creates a sort of bond, you can actually call them by their first name. So an example would be John. Let's say his name is John Jones. So he might say, just call me John. If it's a female lecturer, she might tell them to just call me Jennifer. Jennifer instead of Dr. Jones, okay? So when in doubt, when in doubt, you may ask them. What I mean by when in doubt, you don't know how to address them, what is culturally appropriate, if you know you want to be more formal or do you want to be less formal, look around or ask. You can use these questions. What can I call you? Or what name do you go by? What name do you go by? Or how do you like to be called? How do you like to be called? You can even say, can I call you Jennifer? Or is it okay if I call you John? Now, you don't need to ask if that's what people around you call your lecturer or your peer or your colleagues. Listen, but when in doubt, you can use these questions. Now, if you are the person answering that, you can say, you know what, just call me just call me. So I had a friend, this is in Malaysia, he had just received his doctorate. So he has a PhD to his name. So in a formal setting, you would normally call him doctor, for example, Dr. Fazli, right? But with me, because we're friends, 
I did ask him first, like, you know, what should I call you? Um, is it doctor now? And he said, you know, drop the title, drop the title, just call me Fazli. And it's good because you can be informal. But that was over, you know, a chat. So you can do that as well. But you need to know when you can be formal and when you don't need to be so formal. Because normally we don't want to be so formal with our friends, especially if you want to create a bond and you've known that person for a long time. But then it really, really depends, okay? So now I have a question for you. How are first names and surnames used in Malaysia? And how do Malaysians prefer to be addressed in Malaysia? Now, for Malaysian names, it's slightly different. So for Malays, like me, I'm a Malay, we don't have a surname. So, for example, my name is Azima Shurfa binti Muhammad Shukri. Azima Shurfa is my given name, my name. Binti means daughter of. And then Muhammad Shukri is my father's name. Right. So, when I get married and I am married, I don't take up my husband's name or surname. I prefer to just be called Azima. That's it. It's odd to use Muhammad Shukri as my surname if you want to call me Mrs. or... Madam Muhammad Shukri is weird. So at university, I'm addressed as Madam Azima. In letters, on the other hand, in Malaysia, this is how letters are addressed to me. Dear Azima, or even Dear Madam Azima, even Dear Puan, and I've had Dear Sister Azima, and even Dear Sister. So Dear Sister, because that's what it was like back at um, my former institution where I used to work. We called each other brother and sister. We had that as well in letters. Um, and so I want to ask you, is it okay to be called, for example, dear Mrs. Muhammad Shukri, my father's name, or dear Mrs. Shukri? Well, my mother was called Mrs. Shukri because that was the culture back then in the UK. And so we had to get used to that because we don't have a surname. We had to get used to that. So that was what um, it was like for my mom. What about dear sir or madam, dear sir slash madam? We get that all the time in letters. That's when they don't know our name. But try to try to find out who you're addressing the letter to. I've even had dear brother slash sister, right? When it's like a general letter addressed to everybody. Okay. So find out what's the culture and um, how are people addressed in letters in that particular company. So find out. Now for Malaysian Chinese names, a personal name is normally made up of two words. So for example, Li Mei. Li Mei is a female name and that's her first name. However, it's different for Chinese, Malaysian Chinese, because they would have uh, their family name at the front. So for example, if her family name is uh, Tan, spelled T-A-N, pronounced Chen, for example, Chen Li Mei, Chen Li Mei, Chen would be at the front, and then Li Mei. So Chen is a family name, and in a formal setting, she might be addressed as Miss Chen, and in an informal setting, it might be Li Mei. Li Mei. If she has a Western name, Emily might be put at the front, Emily Chen, Li Mei. And if she's married, for example, she might take on her husband's surname, so it might be Mrs. Chen, Mrs. Chen. And or go back to her name, her family name, so Miss Chen, right? For Malaysian Indian names, on the other hand, slightly different. So for a male, this is how they're named. They have a personal name plus the word anak lelaki or son of plus their father's name. So for example, Nagaratnam, son of Subramaniam. And similarly, for a female, she'd, be, she'd have a personal name and anak perempuan or daughter of father's name. For example, Narayani, daughter of Sivalingam. Okay. So let's talk about how we Malaysians are addressed in schools in Malaysia. Okay. So at school, this is what is normally practiced. So we have word cikgu, which means teacher. Cikgu, teacher. So, for example, cikgu Aini, cikgu Imran. Or Puan, if she's married. Puan, first name, not Puan, surname. So, for example, Puan Anis. 
for a man, Encik. For example, Encik Ramesh. For an English teacher, he might be called Mr. or Sir, Mr. Anwar or even Sir Anwar, right? Really depends on his preference. And we also use the word teacher. So it's a title that's used in Malay, it's cikgu, but for an English teacher, he or she might be called teacher. So for example, teacher Hana, teacher Nazrin. This is normally used for English teachers, but it really depends on the school, okay? And for a religious teacher, ustaz for a male religious teacher, or ustazah for a female religious teacher, okay? Now let's take a look at universities in Malaysia. So at university, so for Malays, if they have a doctor or a prof, we go by their first name. So doctor, first name, or prof, first name, for example, Dr. Shafawati or Dr. Azmin. But I've also seen um, doctor or prof with a family name. So for example, for non-Malays usually, Professor Wong. So Wong is his family name. But I've also seen um, a doctor with a first name, Dr. Carol. So again, this really depends on their preference, okay? Now, for lecturers without a doctor, without a PhD, without a professor to their name, they might be called Madam, Madam first name, for example. For a Malay married woman, Madam Halima, okay? But I've also seen Madam family name, for example, Madam Kwan. Now, she may opt to use Miss instead or Miss, M-I-S-S. -S. Miss can be a first name or a family name. But normally in Malaysia, we have Miss plus our first name. So Miss Aisha, Miss Priyanka, for example. Okay. Now, private schools in Malaysia, varied, lots of titles. We have teacher, we have sir, we have mister, we have miss. We have even aunt and uncle. That's right, aunt and uncle. It really depends on what the environment is, what they want to create aunt and uncle, so it's really interesting to me. They want to create a family bond there, really interesting. And even ustaz and ustazah, so it's really, really interesting. Right, so really at the end of the day, if you don't know, always ask, right? You can always ask, for example, ask, what can I call you? What name do you go by? How do you like to be called? And can I call you? Or is it okay if I call you? So always, always do your research. Observe the customs and be respectful. If you don't know and you don't want to ask, then listen and observe the customs and always be respectful. So that's all from me for today. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you guys again next time.